So I thought I'd read you another poem, and I thought I'd read you a second one from Figgy Hobbin by Charles Corsley. I need to explain a few bits about this one. This was written at a time when we were in something called the Cold War, which was like a, a row between different nations. And on the one side you had the West, the USA, Britain. On the other side you had what was called the Eastern Bloc, Russia and uh, different countries like East Germany and Poland. And uh, there were lots of stories that children loved about spies. This is when uh, think stories like James Bond became very popular. A few words I might need to explain because it's an older uh, poem. So you've got um, something like uh, Mahjong, which is a board game, and GNS, which is uh, musical, musical theatre. Uh, Gilbert and Sullivan were the uh, two authors of it, and that was written uh, around the turn of the 19th into the 20th century but very traditionally British. Um, it talks about whiskey being neat. That means whiskey without any water or any uh, coke or anything like that, just pure whiskey. And then it also talks about a briar pipe. That's a pipe, you know, when people put uh, tobacco in and light it and smoke it. So uh, hope you like it. It's my neighbour, Mr Normanton. My neighbour, Mr Normanton, who lives at 95, is as typical as an Englishman as anyone alive. He wears pinstripes and bowler hat, his accent is sublime. He keeps a British bulldog and British summertime. His shoes are always glassy black, he never wears them brown. His brolly's rolled slim as a stick when he goes up to town. He much prefers a game of darts to mahjong or to chess. He fancies Chelsea for the cup and dotes on GNS. Roast beef and Yorkshire pudding are what he most likes to eat. His drinks are tea and British beer, and sometimes whiskey, neat. Out of a British briar pipe, he puffs an empire smoke, while go gazing at his roses, red, beneath a British oak. And in his British garden, upon St George's Day, he hoists a British Union Jack and shouts, hip hip, hooray! But tell me, Mr Normanton, that even evening after dark, who were those foreign gentlemen you met in Churchill Park? You spoke a funny language I couldn't understand, and wasn't that some microfilm you'd hidden in your hand? And then I saw that note you post inside a hollow tree, and when I jumped out you turned about as quick as quick could be. Why did you use a hearing aid while strolling in the park and talk to that worried-looking Admiralty clerk? The day you took a cipher book from underneath a stone, I'm certain, Mr Normanton, you thought you were alone. Your powerful transmitter, the stations that you call, I love to watch you through the crack that's in my bedroom wall. Ah, thank you, Mr Normanton, for asking me to tea. It's really all quite riveting to clever boys like me. What? Will I come and work for you? Now please don't mention pay. What super luck I left a note to say I'd run away. Is that a gun that's in your hand? And look, a lethal pill. And that's a real commando knife. I say, this is a thrill. Of course, I've never said a word about the things that you do. Let's keep it all a secret between just me and... So... Charles Causley, Figgy Hobbin. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.